in these days of Muharram, there is another woman who is worth thinking about and talking about, a woman who is at times quite neglected and yet plays such an important role both physically and psychologically. And that, of course, is Umm Salama. So Umm Salama is the last surviving widow of the Prophet of Islam. And therefore, at the time of Karbala, she is a woman of, of a certain age. She is no longer young. She is greatly beloved by Al Hussein, and she in turn greatly loves him. The little boys, Al Hassan and Al Hussein, are often in her house. She is a sort of a surrogate grandmother to them, a babysitter. They play outside of her house and in her house. And it's going to be in the house of Umm Salama that the Prophet of Islam has a very important visitation from Jibril. He tells Umm Salama to stand guard over the door, not to allow anyone to enter, because he is occupied with talking with this heavenly messenger. But while they are talking, little Al Hussein, a boy of perhaps five or six, comes along, tired, dragging his feet, the texts say. Umm Salama, um Salama tries to prevent him from entering the room, but in some texts he's much too fast for her, being a little boy, and he sneaks past her or dashes past her. In other texts she picks him up, but he cries because he wants to be with his grandfather, who he knows is in the room. And finally, despite all her best efforts to guard the door, he enters the room and leaps onto his grandfather's shoulders and sits there, and it's at this moment that Jibril says to Muhammad, do you love him? The Prophet says, of course I love him. I love him more than the whole world. And Jibril then makes this terrible prediction that the Prophet's own ummah or members of his own ummah are going to kill his grandson and says to him, would you like to see the place where he is going to die? Yes, of course, says the Prophet. And Jibril, stretching out his wing, produces some of the red dust of Karbala. The Prophet puts this into a little glass jar, a little vial, and gives it into the safekeeping of Umm Sal Salama. She keeps it safe, and for more than 40 years, every single day of her life, she looks at this glass vial, remembering the promise made to her by the Prophet that when the dust in the vial turns to blood, she will know that her beloved Al Hussein has been murdered. For more than 40 years, she keeps faithful vigil until the day that the glass vial shows blood rather than soil. She rushes weeping into the streets of Medina to announce that he has been killed. She is mocked by the people who hear her, but she, she has already heard that night the voices of the jinn lamenting the death of Al Hussein. Um Salama reminds us of so many things, keeping prayerful vigil keeping watch for years, trusting in God, no matter how many years we have to wait for him to answer our dua, our prayer. But she also represents the elderly of our community, those widows and widowers who we neglect, who have been left behind by all of our modern technology. We are so interconnected, all of us, but we are not always connected with the very people in the room with us. And in many cases, it is the elderly members of our family who are unable to keep up with this technology and so live in a sort of exile. We need to watch that very carefully. Um Salama dwells in each member of our family who has reached a certain age. And the aged among us, the widows and the widowers, have a collective wisdom to offer. If only we would take the time to listen to them. If only we would switch off all our connectivity, all of our, our uh, social media, all of our technology and just sit and listen to years of prayer and of experience, years of suffering, years of patience with themselves and with God. So in these days of Muharram, let the wonderful Umm Salama, the last surviving wife of the Prophet of Islam, the beloved surrogate mother or grandmother of Al Hussein, let her intercede for us also, that we would never ever fail to listen to the wisdom and to respect the dignity and the virtues of the elderly who live among us and who are often reduced to silence by our modern world because our modern world thinks that only the young 
have something constructive to offer.